or too late that there is a template <laughs> available. But anyway, so I'm, I'm happy that I'm here for first time uh, in the Neotoma meeting. Um, I'm representing the Global Palio Fire Database, which is a new constituent, constituent database in Neotoma. And it's actually a uh, yeah, long existing database uh, that had uh, developed, um, yeah, maybe somehow in parallel also with Neotoma. And I'm happy that we are now in the progress uh, to yeah, join up forces and to share uh, data or, or to have all the data at, a, at one site. I just want to tell you uh, to start with the science in a way um, that uh, why we need uh, palio fire data and um, this is basically because fire is an issue uh, all over the globe uh, as you may have no uh, notice also in the news or in your neighborhood wherever and uh, palio fire has long been studied together with uh, pollen uh, data um, but not uh, necessarily always together with pollen data um, so there is uh, chances that we can um, yeah, combine pollen vegetation data with paleo fire data, charcoal data to understand better how um, fire regimes uh, changed over, uh, over time and how interactions between fire climate and vegetation have been do uh, done, but also with human uh, impacting all the things. And um, for this, it's crucial somehow to define a fire regime because that's more than just to have a fire burning. It can There can be several different type of fire um, with different frequency over the year or the different seasonality intensities. And that also will impact our proxy data that we will have uh, in sedimentary records, for example, that we may have different proxies for um, different uh, material that has been burned, different biomass that burned, but also from different intensities. And there is quite a variety of charcoal. So there's not charcoal, just charcoal, but there's also a variety of um, morphotypes, for example, that will tell us uh, potentially more about fire regime changes in the past. And so that's why it's also important to include uh, yeah, uh, characterizations of charcoal uh, as such. So we don't deal with taxonomy, uh, that uh, to say first. So there is no clear taxonomy, but something similar in a way that we can identify morphotypes that may be related to certain type of vegetation, for example, but also the, uh, uh, from, uh, yeah, the, the, the properties of the charcoal related to uh, fire intensity. Yeah, and there's uh, rich statistical methods that analyze fire uh, regime uh, with uh, single charcoal records that's here on, on the top. And then um, the Palio Fire community is a community that uh, has a lot of experience in uh, synthesis of data records, um, and there has been a long history in compiling uh, data from uh, publications, Palio Fire data, and to um, yeah uh, address global or subcontinental scale questions. And there have been, um, and this has been supported by Pages. Uh, there was uh, the, the Palio Fire working group being established. And uh, it was also supported by developments in, in R that there is a, a Palio Fire package published by Olivier Blaquez in 2014 already. And Walter Finzinger is working on another package currently. And maybe that's also just to keep in mind um, for connection with, um, yeah, um, in and data analysis in the future. Just a brief uh, history. So uh, the Palio Fire database is a part, uh, is derived from the charcoal database that was already started in 2005 by several people. It's hosted and technically developed in, in um, Besançon in France. And uh, there has been several versions that brought up a very interesting large scale Palio Fire synthesis with uh, filling, so that filled up this uh, database. No? So all these synthesis efforts filled up our database. And there were uh, yeah, different versions later on. And then also at some point, uh, some modern charcoal, global charcoal data set being published uh, that's also contributing uh, there, um, but it's uh, individual data set so far, not an individual database. 
And then in version three, that was uh, that was the la last, uh, I would say, global um, synthesis effort, looking at different scales and also different time uh, slots, uh, hemispheric scales. And uh, yeah, and then in yeah 2020, the Paleofire Working Group um, was not further prolonged as a Pages Paleo uh, Working Group anymore because there's yeah at some time a working group should establish itself. And so there, the, the International Paleofire Network uh, emerged, which is still endorsed by Pages. And the Paleo and the charcoal database was renamed to Paleofire Database to acknowledge that there's more than charcoal to reconstruct Paleofire. Uh, for example, uh, also fire biomarkers no? or other yeah, molecule, um, yeah, other proxies. It's still uh, uh, hosted in Besançon. And uh, yeah, and also supported by other working groups in Pages. And uh, the idea is that uh, uh, we include more uh, watershed and basin properties, for example, but also to include more paleofire proxies, and then uh, uh, to to move on in the next step that we are now here. Um, to to merge uh, with Neotoma because then we can make use of all the metadata that is already there can connect proxy data from different communities and databases, which would be really great to not just look at charcoal as such. You know? Yeah, this is a structure of the current uh, Paleofire database. So it has actually all what we may need also for, um, for Neotoma. So there is uh, sites, um, cores, samples, and then the charcoal properties, records, units, um, we have also uh, date, uh, dating and age model in there, and uh, and so all this uh, is associated. So it's a yeah somehow a parallel development, and of course the author information, author or contributor. And uh, the idea is that we can add also other uh, fire proxies uh, like biomarkers, but also morphotypes are currently not very well represented in the in the charcoal database. So it would be good to uh, have that in mind when joining uh, Neotoma. Yeah, so currently uh, the database as it is, you find it uh, in the International Paleofire Network IPN uh, website, has uh, 1,250 uh, sites and uh, many data sets. And there are sites without data, so it means that there may be people currently uploading or there's progress in upload uh, already. And uh, then also Neotoma, of course, has the uh, charcoal data. If you look for charcoal, micro and macro charcoal, you found, find about uh, 360 data sets already. And so one of the first steps is to, to check which, what is double in which database before we merge. So where and how to go now? So we are in a, um, yeah, a community driven uh, database uh, managers. We found already some uh, data stewards. And the first thing is to review and summarize how we describe charcoal in the Paleofire database and in Neotoma to join up uh, the most common categories in terms of size of charcoal, morphotypes, methods, units, and somehow also to harmonize uh, how we describe our data sets by keeping also original descriptors of the authors that we then uh, we want to develop a, a data input template because uh, most people in the Paleofire community that are not from the polling community are not familiar with Telia. So it's very hard for us to, to think into it and to, to work on it. So we would like to provide our authors and um, data synthesis compilers uh, with a template that we are already started to work on. And then, um, as I said, to identify records which are already in both database, to contact also authors for those in the Paleofire database before upload, that also we ask for active authors to help uh, correcting and filling the, the, the Neotuma de template then. And then, of course, we also want to encourage data synthesis study because that's the way how we uh, uh, collect the data in the past. And, um, and there are, we are aware of several synthesis studies going on, and there are some of our data stewards already um, actively working on uh, data synthesis. So we have uh, several people or uh, some people working in Africa, uh, Yoshi Masumi in Amazonia, for example, uh, Chema is working in uh, Mongolia and uh, Western Siberia. 
Kendrick in Canada, uh, Colin um, is yeah, uh, in Europe and Africa, uh, Angelica is compiling a Boreal data set and so on. No? And uh, who you probably know is Walter and Graciela already. They are um, part uh, the EPD data stewards and also working with Charcoals. And then also Berenger is uh, uh, supporting us uh, from her EPD uh, uh, work. And yeah, and maybe also important to mention is Emma's compilation of Australia New Guinea data sets that uh, she's then actively involving. Yeah, and we're all somehow struggling uh, a bit with Tilia, but I think there's solutions for that. And yeah, so with this, I would like uh, to thank you for uh, opening us uh, the, the possibility to join up um, with Neotoma and that we then maybe can work together on finding solutions, maybe also interested in bulk upload and things like that. Um, once we have our, uh, yeah, uh, taxonomy, you know, <laughs> wider sense uh, or charcoal description harmonized, no? then I think it, it would be time for going ahead. Yeah, okay, thanks a lot. If you have any questions,